<laughs> How are you guys doing? Hi, Chris. Doing really well. Yeah, doing, doing fantastic. You know, despite everything, doing really well. Well, let me give you guys a proper introduction. Uh, Valen and uh, Noah are Bounce Back, Give Back, Chris Klug Foundation, Bounce Back, Give Back Award winners. Uh, of course, uh, both of you guys do so much for the transplant community as uh, um, really showcasing what's possible after a transplant. And uh, Valen, you're both a kidney and more recently a liver transplant recipient. And uh, we'll talk all about that in a few minutes, but I want to make sure I give you a proper introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot for joining me. These are uh, certainly strange and uncertain times and uh, probably even more so in the transplant community. Tell me where you guys are now and, and how's life these days? Absolutely, well, it's wonderful to see your joyful face to, to brighten <laughs> our you. day. Um, it definitely is unique times and with being high risk, you know, with being a dual transplant recipient, it's extra concerning yet has a lot of familiar feelings to it as well, especially with just being a year and a half post transplant. Yeah, we just we just felt like we were getting back into the <laughs> living a normal life the last year. You know, the, the the time before that, heading up to transplant, and then after transplant, you know, obviously you're you're very cautious. You don't want to get sick. You don't want to you know catch anything as a caregiver and, and give it to somebody else uh, who's waiting for a transplant or has just been transplanted. So um, we're kind of familiar with this life. It's just really odd for us to see other people living it. it you know, it, it's really strange. Yeah. We, we, uh, uh, doing it ourselves and now the rest of the world doing it is unique. It's almost like they're getting a glimpse into what it feels like to be a transplant recipient. I was going to say this isn't that much different for uh, those of us that are transplant recipients, washing our hands, not touching our faces, being careful and doing uh, elbow bumps and uh, leg kicks instead of, uh, <laughs> instead of shaking yeah. hands and kissing. Um, <laughs> So it's, I think you're right. It gives everybody else a, I suppose I said this a couple of times, I guess one of the silver linings is we're all going to have better hygiene and hopefully people will get the regular influenza A or B far less frequently and uh, stay healthier as a result of this. Yeah, we're, we're hoping that that's one of the silver linings that comes out of this. And also for people in the outside of the transplant community to, to realize the importance of protecting yourself, not only for yourself, but protecting yourself for the high risk communities that are around you. Yeah, that's what this is all about is, you know, there's so many, we have so many young friends and, and really, really healthy people that um, I've had uh, at least a dozen friends here in uh, the Roaring Fork Valley and Aspen and, and SOMAS that have gotten Corona and most of them have done really well. They're young, healthy, fit people. But uh, as you mentioned, Noah, really, um, protecting those that are most vulnerable in our communities is what this is all about. And uh, I suppose it's good for us to all be a little less uh, selfish and look out for one another and our communities. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's what we're trying to do as well. Yeah, exactly. Are you, uh, are you staying sane during all of this? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I think now what I've learned through all my health issues is how adaptable we are to change. Yeah. You know, in the beginning, anything seems like a shock, but now I feel like almost when we started this week that I'm settled into this new routine, uh, it definitely was an adjustment in the beginning. And I think the biggest thing for myself personally is I was really enjoying being out in the world again. I mean, I was sick for several years before transplant, then it was, you know, post-transplant, and I felt like I was living my best life again out in the world, traveling, doing advocacy efforts. And now I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't want to be indoors again, but I'll do whatever it takes, of course, to take care of my precious organs. And hopefully we can get back out there again and live our lives outside, outside the world with our friends and family. You will, I'm sure of it. You know, we talked for a minute about silver linings. And for me, I think one of the real silver linings is spending uh, more time with my wife, Missy, and my kids. And they're oftentimes involved in, in uh, interviews like this and in business, I'll be on a call and they'll come running in and do victory laps <laughs> around my chair as I'm sitting here. Um, but I, I love sp having lunch with them every day and we've been on some great hiking and biking and skiing adventures the last few weeks together and uh, I really, uh, really enjoyed that. Yeah, that, 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 yeah we've, we've been going for walks in the evening and kind of that, that's what we were talking about is this is a really 
it's not nice, but this is really an opportunity for us, for everyone to, to slow down, to do some of the things you, you, you've been putting off, whether that's reconnecting with, with people that you might have uh, lost touch with a little bit or you know, cleaning out a bookshelf or cleaning out a desk or wh whatever that, yeah, that junk drawer, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's taking, finding those silver linings as opportunities with what we're dealt with right now, uh, you know, finding those little things that you can continue to keep yourself active and busy and, and get some positive uh, results from, from this time. I'm discovering some great treasures in my drawers. I'm going Marie Kondo on all my drawers and uh, get trying to get my desk and things organized that I haven't touched in four years. And I couldn't find something in the top drawer the other day. I pulled out the drawer and dumped it upside down on the floor. And I said, about time I went through this stuff. <laughs> I've been yep. doing that too. Yep, yep, yep. Val cleaned out her desk and a whole big area back in the back of our house. So yeah, we've been doing the early spring cleaning as well. That's <laughs> awesome. Life gets so busy and, you know, it goes so fast. And now we're able to really choose meaningful things of what we can do right now. And, you know, of course, in our homes. Yeah. Has yeah. Noah, has your role changed as um, caregiver and now support uh, family team member? Has your role changed at all as a result of, of COVID and this new paradigm? It, it has, you know, I, I think my, my role has changed you know, shifted from from uh, previous to to COVID uh, to now, it's it's more of a making sure the household stays stays healthy. You know, it, it it's being very uh, proactive, going out grocery shopping uh, once a week, going during the high risk hours, uh, first thing in the morning, getting all the shopping done, coming home, getting it all laid out, cleaned, put away, uh, washing hands, washing. You must clothes. be the youngest dude in the store. <laughs> well, <laughs> Absolutely, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure I get looks. And actually, one of the places we called, uh, we talked to the, the manager about it, and she gave her name and said, "Hey, you guys, you can come in as a caregiver of a high risk person. Yeah. Just make sure you give my name. I'm the manager, and they'll let you through the door." Because that was that was our concern as well. You show up as a as a younger, able bodied looking person at these special hours for high risk people, and they're they're not going to be so, maybe not so sure about you. So, so we've been, we've been calling ahead and, and figuring out those hours. We're figuring out what we can do to, uh, to mitigate the risk of exposure, including uh, some pharmacies are doing home delivery. Um, we think we've had that as well. So just, again, avoiding things, unnecessary risks. Valen, what have you um, what have you learned from your transplant docs and uh, some of your transplant community friends in um, any any sage advice or, or insights that you've gotten uh, as it pertains to recipients and, and candidates and, and those that are maybe uh, getting ready for for this whole process? I feel like it's a lot of the same a lot of the same skill sets of what we were doing, except I noticed myself very heightened awareness and doing a lot more of it of washing hands and all of that. But I have completely isolated myself at home, except for going to monthly labs. So I feel really lucky to have Noah, amazing husband and caregiver, that he's willing to go out in the world and grocery shop and come home and lace all everything and eliminate me from having to touch anything. So we're really keeping myself super protected and not taking any risks because yeah, you just don't know what we have this you know a suppressed immune system you don't know how our bodies will handle it so we're taking it very seriously because yeah. we've been through a lot to get to this point of good health for sure yeah and I, and I think uh you know patience i think for the other people that are waiting or just out of transplant i think uh patience is really an important um thing to to focus on right now mm -hmm. understand uh, how busy your doctors might be, understand how busy medical professionals are, uh, the stress that they're under uh, in, under the current situation, the, the constant changes they're faced with. So just be patient in that regard, as well as, um, you know, getting out or post-transplant, you know, be patient uh, as well on that side, because they are, they're, they're busy and they're, they're trying to adjust to this new lifestyle, maybe working from home, and uh, they're doing the best they can. So I think just all of us take a breath, be patient, and we'll get through this. And I think still taking, I'm still very focused and of course taking the best care of myself. I keep saying to Noah, I want to come out of this stronger than I was going into COVID-19 because we're home now. So we have to do some different things. Like I'm not out and about and running errands as much. So 
I'm making sure I'm getting outside for mental well-being and physical walking and totally. I love Pilates and I can't go to my weekly Pilates but I'm fortunate to have a reformer at home so I'm getting on that and stretching and you know you can I'm trying to get into you know healthy routines for continuing to eat healthy and all of that and so I'm really continuing to focus on well-being and health and not get distracted by all the negativity and maybe get out of some good routines you know I think that's why I wanted to talk to you guys today is that you know you you watch too much CNN or Fox News or NBC News and you're ready to slit your wrists after that it's so depressing and one of the things we wanted to do is just have an opportunity to talk to some of our favorite people and uh, hear your inspirational stories. You guys have been through so much. You know how to deal with things like this. And um, I just have recognized in talking to a lot of my transplant friends that we're all kind of scratching our heads like, you know, I don't really know. I mean, in general, people without transplants don't have all the answers, let alone uh, those of us that have received a second chance at life. So. Uh, I really uh, am grateful for the opportunity to catch up with you guys and hear uh, your inspiring stories. Once again, it's uh, always uplifting and I think helpful, not just for me, but for so many of uh, our Chris Kluge Foundation friends. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. I wanted to, absolutely. I wanted to share with you guys, I had a funny story. I, I had to get my labs as well. I do that typically quarterly. Uh, I'm approaching 20 years since my liver transplant. And I called my doc down in uh, Basalt and I said, hey, I need to get my labs, but there's no way in heck I'm going into the hospital right now. I said, I'm feeling perfect. And I just, I haven't seen any other human beings besides uh, my kids and my wife uh, in three weeks. And I said, I'm just, there's no way I'm coming into the hospital right now. He said, no problem. Just pull into the parking lot, roll your window down a quarter of the way, stick your arm out the window and we'll come out and uh, take, your, take your labs. I said, well, I, I love your creativity. This is great. So sure oh. enough, pulled into the parking lot, stuck my arm out the window. And my friend Abby comes out in what looked like a hazmat suit and took my labs. And I was giggling. I said, this is hysterical. But it was safe. Labs came out good. And uh, everybody uh, turned out okay. So. Oh, my God. Yeah. I love that so much. And we, you know, we're obviously in Northern California here. And I had a similar experience, too. With I had to do a urine sample. And I thought, I'm not going into a waiting room with all the people and doing that. Really? And and I was fortunate to... And, and the waiting room is shared with urgent care, so yeah. double not going there. I, yeah, you don't want to like, do that. There is no way. No, even as much as I mask and glove up, I'm no way going in there. So I called and wound up a phlebotomist, walked out, and I was in the driver's seat, parked at the curb, handed it out through the passenger window, and he took my urine sample, and off I went. Fortunately, had good news as well. And it's that amazing extra step that they're doing that is protecting us. And mm -hmm. that's what we need to do. I think we need to make sure ahead of time that we're calling and seeing what we can do to take the best care of ourselves and eliminate any risk and, you know, being around others. Totally. Well, let me switch, switch gears a little bit. You guys were our 2017 uh, Chris Kluge mm -hmm. Foundation Bounce Back Give Back Award winners. And that recognizes uh, uh, recipients that have not only received a second chance at life, but also found a way to give back and help uh, inspire others going through the same thing that, that uh, both of us did. And uh, I'd just love to hear your experience coming out to Aspen in 2017 and uh, celebrating at Summit for Life together. Oh my gosh, it will go down as uh, I can, I'll speak for myself. <laughs> I hate to put words in the, one of the best experiences of my life. It came at, a very difficult time in our lives. And I really believe it gave me strength headed into getting a liver transplant. Um, the, our, the story leading into it was just incredible because I was dealing with repeat sepsis episodes and several days before we were to get on a plane from California to Colorado, I got another sepsis episode and was in the hospital. And I was devastated because I wanted to of course, come see you and experience this whole event. And we wound up, like we always do, just doing the best we can and trying to bounce back from things and wound up being able to travel several days after being in the hospital mm -hmm. to receive the award. And it was thanks to the team here in California and Aspen Hospital taking care of me because every day while we were there, I went into the Aspen Hospital to get 
an infusion in my port in order to keep me healthy um, was receiving IV antibiotics. Yeah, and, and just the, the energy of the event, the energy of the town, the community that rallies around your yeah. organization for that event is just, is just amazing. I mean, it, it's this, it, it just feels like the whole town's coming out and lifting mm -hmm. everybody up and understands the importance of organ donation, understands the, 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 the dramatic change that it can have on somebody's life, and not just that person's life, but the caregivers, the family members, the friends, the loved ones, it just has such a ripple effect through that person's community. And I, and I really think the community, the town of Aspen, feels that way and understands it. And just, you know, seeing those people going charging up the mountain in support of organ donation, seeing them uh, celebrate at the top of Aspen Mountain, uh, you know, celebrating organ donation, celebrating the importance, celebrating life was just uh, an, an incredibly beautiful, powerful experience for, for the both of us. I mean, it felt so surreal. And I'll never forget the dinner the night before Summit for Life when I, we were up front and was sharing my story with everybody that was there. And I remember it was a very raw time for me and being able to be authentic. And I remember getting emotional while sharing my story. And I felt like everybody just opened up just their hearts to me and supported me and it made me feel like I was going to be okay and I would get through this and then the next day being able to be on top of the mountain and just receive this award um, I just really feel like it gave me the fighting power to keep going and meeting you and knowing how well you're doing so long after a liver transplant and thinking okay I hope that someday I'll be like him and be on the other side and um, just just one of the biggest honors and um we just feel so lucky to now be friends with you and to continue you know being involved and just um just overwhelming overwhelming gratitude for it well likewise we feel the same way and love uh love you guys and all that you're doing and and really uh we were honored to host you it's um really special bringing uh someone like uh like both of you here to aspen and I care so much for this community. I love this community and I also love our transplant community and, and what you guys are doing. So it was an honor and, and a privilege for us as well to host you. Thank, Thank you. you. We're, uh, we just sent out our, uh, our um, nominations for, uh, or our, our uh, opened up the nominations for the uh, 2020 Bounce Back Give Back Award winners. What was it like when you guys uh, were informed that you had been selected for in 2017. Well, it was just, I mean, it was, it was a, uh, an amazing feeling. It kind of had, how Valen had said, already said, it was, it was such a, we were going through much, so much change in our lives at the point. I mean, that's part of the reason why, why I signed up. I mean, obviously Valen, um, she's bounced back from her previous transplant. She's really a champion for the community, uh, the PKD community, as well as the organ donation community. And, she just, in my, in my eyes, she really exemplified somebody bouncing back from these challenges and, and giving back to the community, giving back to, giving back to life. And so, you know, it was a no brainer for, for me to, to, to write her nomination. And um, when we found out, I mean, we were just, we were just so, ex we were just so excited. Like she said, this is just something that we needed. We needed to find those little bits of of positivity to help pull us through these these challenges you know as a transplant recipient there's going to be challenging times um you know i don't think we know anybody that that's a recipient that doesn't have bumps hiccups um throughout throughout their the course of their their journey and to have pieces like this to to aspire to and then afterwards to look back on and just oh and just be and marvel at how how beautiful life is i mean this is why we fight through these challenges to, to come out on the other side and have experiences um, like this, just fantastic. And for me, having something to look forward to is what fuels me to keep fighting. And that was something huge to look forward to. And during that time, it was amazing to have that. And, and like Noah said, then to look back on that. So those memories like that, if I'm having a health hiccup and in a hard time, it's like, oh, how about that time? We were on top of Aspen Mountain with the Chris Blue Foundation. <laughs> Like, oh man, okay. Just That's what it's all about. Yeah, it really is. I love it. Well, Noah, I was going to ask you uh, what made you uh, nominate Valon, but I think you just answered it beautifully. <laughs> I, I, think, I think so. I think you just worked that, worked that in there. Yeah. Nice work. 
Well, I got to ask you, did you guys do a, uh, an egg hunt yesterday or uh, what did your uh, holiday weekend look like? <laughs> We're going to sound really boring. <laughs> <and> she... <laughs> Cleaning out those, those junk areas of the house while I was, while I was outside painting the side of the house. Wow. <laughs> we, we need, we need it sounds like we need a kid or something, right? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, our uh, six and, and six and eight year old, now nine years old, uh, yesterday was her birthday uh, on Easter. Um, kept us awfully busy. We had egg hunts and uh, bunny cakes and, uh, and then a birthday party on top of it all. So, oh, that's yeah, awesome. That was fun. I'm sure, you guys are having so much fun together during this time. Uh, as I said earlier, I think that's one of the real silver linings love and spending time with them. And I think the online learning might be cracking my wife a little bit, but. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure. That's the, uh, more hands-on, I think, than we realize. But uh, no, we're really enjoying it. And kids are doing awesome and fun spending lots of time with them. Good. <laughs> Looks like you guys are both still uh, staying fit and healthy and on the reformer, going for walks. Any other uh, advice or uh, secrets to your success and uh, staying healthy? Yeah, I think they just, you know, cut yourself a break. I mean, we're all we're all learning how to navigate this time. And so it's new to all of us, even, even us in the transplant community that have dealt with uh, things somewhat similar to this in the past, you know, being, being afraid of, of germs or infections. But I, I think just being patient, just realizing that, that we're, all, we're all, in the, all in this together, we're all learning together, and we'll all figure it out and get through it together. So I think just, I think that's, that'd be my main message for people out there on how to deal with it. And I think right now, mental health is so important because this is really hard and there's a lot of changes and a lot of loss. And for me, trying to deal with that, I've been trying to shift any fear to gratitude. So if I get really concerned about things like, personally, I'm wondering, will I live very isolated life until there's a vaccine or what's my future gonna look like? And when I start to think too big picture like that, I start to bring myself in and focus on the current day and the current tasks and focus on gratitude versus all of that fear. And for me, I'm so grateful to be as healthy as I am. I mean, I feel like the happiest, healthiest, best version of myself that I've been in years. So even though I'm cooped up, I'm focusing on how amazing it is that I'm healthy, even though I'm, you know, quarantined right now. So I'm, I'm trying to focus on gratitude more than fear. I love it. And shifting uh, fear to gratitude is, such a great uh, mantra to live by. I love that. Well, I love chatting with you guys. Thanks for, uh, I think one of the hardest parts about this whole deal is I miss my friends and that includes you guys. And, um, yeah. but very grateful for uh, things like Zoom and FaceTime and whatnot. So we can still connect, uh, albeit virtually. Uh, nice to see your guys' faces. Oh, yeah, it's really nice to see you too, Chris. And yeah, the weather so looks a lot nicer there than uh, Aspen right now. We had uh, a nice dose of springtime last week. I was on my road bike and loving it in a t-shirt and shorts, and now we're back to down jackets and 20 degrees. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, California sounds pretty nice right now as an Aspenite. Yeah, <laughs> we finally had a break. It's been kind of rainy, cool for us, and then we had a break in the, in the weather this weekend. That's why I was out there painting the side of the house. Yeah. So, yeah. Good for you. Well, when you're done with your house, if you wouldn't mind coming over to uh, Aspen and helping me out, that'd be great. Hey, yep, I'm going to sign them up. <laughs> Road trip. Any excuse to get there, she's, she'll sign me up for it. So. You guys are always welcome. I got a guest room ready for you. So I hope you'll come back and uh, join us for Summit for Life again one of these days. Absolutely. Oh, we would love we that. Some, some class reunions. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You're always welcome. Anything else you guys want to share with uh, Team CKF or with uh, our transplant and CKF friends? As far as the you and the entire team at the Chris Klug Foundation, we've always felt very connected and love collaborating with you because of how authentic you guys are. You know, everything's just really genuine and we feel like we connect a lot with that and we just love your mission and what you're doing and are always happy to be a part of it and however we can. Well, you guys are heroes uh, to me and, and to our foundation and to I know so many people, as I say, uh, transplant friends. You've both uh, persevered through so much. And, you know, that's, uh, I think, one of the great um, pieces of advice or, or axioms that I've lived by in my snowboarding career and in my transplant experience is never given up. Winston Churchill's famous quote of never, never, never quit. And boy, there's been some times I know uh, when you guys and 
wanted to throw the towel in, as did I at times, uh, on a waiting list and, and hanging and hoping and praying for that second chance. But he kept fighting, and I really admire that and, and love sharing that with, uh, with others because you guys have, uh, have been there through some tough times and, and persevered through the adversity and bounced back, as you said, to uh, a great quality of life and the best version of yourself. Thank you. And we so appreciate you giving us a platform to share our story and just to be able to see you and hang out with you and be your friend because <laughs> you're amazing. Like <laughs> well, you're a beautiful writer too. And we love uh, all the great blog posts that you do and, uh, and the writing both on your site and on ours. And uh, again, grateful for all that you guys do to give back to help other people. I think that's kind of why we started this foundation uh, in 2003 was you know, I, I made a promise and I know you guys have made the same commitment to say, hey, if I get through this, I want to find a way to give back and help other people going through this. And uh, here I am 20 years later since my liver transplant and very grateful to still be here. And, uh, you know, we're obviously reminded of that right now with what our uh, communities and, and what our whole world are going through right now. And um, special to, to get to connect with you guys and catch up. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank and, you. And I... I feel like we know, of course, how incredible good health is and to have that. And I feel like the rest of the world is getting a better understanding of the importance of health. And right now, I've really been thinking of the transplant community for those that are waiting for the call and times are different right now and they're having to wait longer. And for people whose surgeries are postponed when they had a living donor and it was scheduled and all of that. So I think it is important for them to see us and see the hope that is out there to hopefully give them the strength to keep fighting. And that's why I really love to share our story. Yeah. Well, me too. Love. Uh, I never get tired of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you well, conti continued good health to both of you guys. And uh, thanks for catching up with me today. I look forward to, as I said, welcoming you back here and seeing you again soon.